be able to put together some thoughts. I found something very interesting that the level Yahu brings. It brings a Gemara. The Gemara over there speaks about how one of the Chachamim, he says that if it wouldn't have been for him, the Torah would have been forgotten from Klal Israel. What does that mean? If it wouldn't have been for him, the Torah would have been forgotten from Klal Israel. He says, the Omer of Chiyah, what did he do? He went and he took flax, he took linen, he planted it, it grew, he took the material to be traps, he took the trap and he went and trapped the deer. After he trapped the deer, he shechted the deer, he took the flesh of the deer, all the meat, all the steaks, he gave it to you, Tomim, to unfortunate children that didn't have parents or lost a parent. He took off their skins, he made skin fruit for his Sefer Torah, he wrote Sefer Torah, and then he went from town to town to teach Torah to everybody. He went from one city to teach Torah, to the next city to teach Torah, to the next city to teach Torah. And then he went and he wrote Rav Chia, tomorrow. And then he went and he did Sisha Shemishin de Mishnah, and he taught all the children Mishnayot, and he went from one person to the next from town to town. And he wanted to teach everybody to the extent that everybody could teach someone else. And everybody knew the whole entire Chumash and all of Sidre Sisha Sidre Mishnah. So everybody could not only learn for himself, but learn for somebody else. Everybody asks a question on this Gemara. Why did Rabbi Chia go through all of this? Why did Rabbi Chia go and take seeds, plant it, take the net, make the net, catch the animal, shake the animal, give the meat to the meat, make the cloth himself? It's very easy for him just to go buy skins from a random place and make the skins for the Seva Torah and that's it, write the Seva Torah and go start teaching Torah. Why did he go from the beginning to the end to be able to make everything from scratch? What was his intention? The Marasha writes, Rav Chia, he wanted to teach the children Torah, Torah that would stay with them forever. He wanted to teach them Torah, Torah that would penetrate within them and stay with them. How do you teach Torah to people that will stay within them and penetrate through them? He said, I'm going to do everything from the beginning to the end, from scratch, with pure thoughts and a pure heart. Because he understood that if I'm going to go now and buy the skins from a deer in a random place, the person who made these skins, his intentions were not intentions to teach Torah. His intentions were to sell these skins were intentions to make money with. That means automatically in these skins that he's going to take to write Sifri Torah had the wrong intentions in them. He said, I want everything from the beginning, from scratch, to have the right intentions in them. Like we find, the Halakha said that if a person, if a person writes a Sifri Torah, but he's a mean, he doesn't believe in Hashem. What could you do with the Sifri Torah? You could burn it. How could you burn the Sifri Torah? It has Hashem's name inside. You know why? It's no Kiddushah. Why doesn't it have no Kiddushah? Because the person who wrote it is a meme. He himself is an Apicorus. The Chachamim tell us that if a person writes a Sefer, but he himself is not a righteous person, that Sefer not only will he not be able to learn from, but that Sefer will also have a negative effect on the person that reads it. Why? Because the person himself is a tiny person. Rav Lopian brings over here, we find that the Mishkan that Betzal made, after all was said and done, the Mishkan was nicknized, it was hidden. And we're not going to have it until the third Beit Mikdash. But everything Betzal made stayed, nothing was destroyed. The Beit Mikdash was destroyed. Everything from the Beit Mikdash was destroyed. Why was everything from the Beit Mikdash destroyed? He says, because when it came to the Beit Mikdash, Hiram, who was a good Shikim, he donated a lot to the Beit Mikdash. And his work has helped with the Beit Mikdash. He wasn't built with that same purity like the Mishkan. It wasn't built with that same purity. It won't have that. It won't have that lasting forever. It won't have that forever lasting. We find also that the Kotel Amaravi that we have today, the Midrash and Shira Shirim, right? What gave the Kotel Amaravi this lasting forever? Hashem says, you know why? Because the people that donated to the Kotel Amaravi, those are the people that were poor. It was hard for them to give, they gave, but they gave from the bottom of their hearts. You know why they gave from the bottom of their hearts? Because they wanted to give to Hashem. Hashem says, since you gave from the bottom of your heart, there's a guarantee that such a thing won't be destroyed. So you see the koach of not only giving, but also giving 
but also give me from the bottom of your heart. The Ramchal writes, what's the difference between one Ebed Hashem and another Ebed Hashem? What makes one righteous person greater than another righteous person? He doesn't say it depends on how much you learned, how many sechlot you finished. It says, how much purity of the heart do you have? How pure is the person's heart? That way, that makes one person greater than the other person. We find also by David HaMelech and Shaul HaMelech, the Hashim Shepik is right, that David HaMelech and Shaul HaMelech, they both sinned. The Shaul HaMelech was killed in a way that was very horrific, and he lost everything. David HaMelech, he also sinned. Not only did he lose anything, but he even became greater. And he says, you know why? Because there's a difference between David and Shaul. Shaul HaMelech was a servant of Hashem. He did what Hashem wanted. He opened the book and said, this is Halakha. But... David HaMelech was different. He loved Hashem. He built a relationship with Hashem. It was real. It was something beyond just what the book said. He wanted to learn. He want, He loved Hashem. He wanted that relationship. We also find something very similar. We find Chachamim that the Kibbana Tanejim calls It says these Chachamim, they knew a lot of Torah. They were able to ask, they were able to go to their rabbis and ask them three, four hundred questions that nobody was able to answer. Right? They were massive in Tawadih Chachamim. They were able to sit and learn all day. They knew everything. Anything you asked them, they were able to tell you. But Hashem told them, Atem Rishayim. You're Rishayim. Why did Rishayim? Why did Rishayim? They're sitting, they're learning Shulchan Aruch. They're learning Halakha. They're learning everything. Why is Hashem calling them Rishayim? Hashem tells them, Atem is the Lachutz. All of you, all of your Torah is only from the lip and out. Your Torah is not, not engraved. It's not in the heart. It's not pure. Your Torah that you're learning is not for the right reasons and not for the right motives. You can learn a lot of Torah, but if it's not changing you, if you're not becoming a greater person, a holier person, a more righteous person, a more sensitive person, if you're that same person that you were before you learned, such a person, the Torah is not affecting you. If the Torah is not affecting you, something is wrong. If the Torah is not affecting you, something is wrong. Every single the day that you're learning, you walk out of the bed with Ash, you have to feel like a different person. Every single tefillah that you finish, you have to feel like a different person. Every single time you come to learn and you're connecting to Akadish Baruch you have to get up and feel like a different person. The Torah has to change you. The Torah has to change you if something is wrong. And that's why Hashem told them Rishayim. Why? Because the fact that the Torah didn't change them is a clear indication that the Torah was impure. If the Torah is contaminated, if you're learning for the wrong reason, or you're learning for kavod, or you're learning for money, or for anything else, it's not going to change you. If you don't have the proper perspective and the proper appreciation, you're not learning with the proper guidance, you can learn your whole life, but you can be the same person that you were before. Chachamim tell us, a person has a time in Chacham, but he doesn't have good midot, maybe not to one man, you see an animal outside is better than him. How could it be that could you could learn so much and still be the same person you are? What happened to your Torah? That shows that your Torah was not real Torah. Genuine Torah is when you learn from your heart, you enjoy it, you love it, you learn with Simcha, you're connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the Vaykut that you have when you learn Torah, you don't want to walk away from the Sefer. It comes when you come to appreciate the Torah, when you come to appreciate Hashem. It's not only learning to gain knowledge, to be able to show off what you know, but it's able to make yourself a greater person, able to make yourself closer to Hashem. You're not doing Hashem a favor. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't need you to learn, Hashem doesn't need you to donate, Hashem doesn't need anything from you. Kaddish Baruch who created the world for you as a privilege for you. And Hashem put the Torah in front of you as a schut for you to come closer to Hashem. And the more you learn, and the more a person learns properly, the more it brings a person closer to Hashem. The more it brings a person, like the Memchet Kimine Torah, it says, Pirkei Avot. Rav Chaim Vital writes, anybody that claims that he can learn Torah, Lishma, these are the things that you can check in. Who could possibly say that he can learn Torah, Lishma? A person that's learning 15, 20 years, 30 years, to 10 years even, right? And there's no hergish of Vekis Hashem. There's no Amas Yisrael. There's no connection to Torah. There's no sensitivity to people around you. Something is wrong. Real Torah changes a person internally. Real Torah makes a person sensitive externally. Real Torah changes a person completely. And we find that over here. It says the Mishkan Eidut, the Matako Or said something very interesting. I'm just going to finish off with this. The Matok is something very interesting. It says the Mishkan Ayyidut over here in Parashat Pikudeh. It says, why is it called the Mishkan of Testimony? 
What was the Mishkan coming to testify? You know what it said? And all the Jewish people, after Moshe Rabbeinu and the Talal, they built the Mishkan, all the Jewish people came along and they said, Hey, look at Moshe Rabbeinu, look how big his neck is. Look how big his arms are. Look how big his thighs are. Right? And then they told him, ah, you know why he's like this? Because we're feeding him, we're giving him everything. That's why he has everything, he has a big belly. Where is he getting everything from? From us! They said, Moshe Rabbeinu heard this. And people were telling each other, of course, you gave Moshe Rabbeinu all the money to go to Mishkan. What do you think happened to all of it? What do you think all of it is? He pocketed it, right? What do you think he has all this food from? It's a clear midrash. The Jewish people, this is the way they were talking. And Hashem said, you know the Mishkan, how you do this? The Mabim writes, the fact that the Shekhinah came to dwell on the Mishkan, that was the Eidut. That everything that Moshe Rabbeinu built into that Mishkan was 100% of kosher money and kosher attention. Because if it wouldn't have been, the Shekhinah wouldn't have dwelled there. So the fact that the Shekhinah dwelled on the Mishkan was a clear indication that everything was done 100% with kosher money, 100% with kosher intentions. And that's what I can tell you with our community, that this is something that we are doing and we are striving for. Baruch Hashem, I speak to Gabriel all the time, and I speak to Menashe and Rabbi Chiyayov, and, and in the Kola, we have good intentions. We want to give because we want to build the Kola. We want to build the Kola because we want to build rabbis to be the future leaders of the generation. Baruch Hashem, our Kola is geared to train the guys, not only to be, to be rabbis, but to be able to grow, to learn, to connect to the people. It's above just learning, but it's also to teach, to be able to give over what you're learning to other people. Rabbi Chiyai, Baruch Hashem, always strives to build for the community. Now, Baruch Hashem, the community is building forward, and we're building more, and we're continuously learning. And Baruch Hashem, Achaz De Hashem, we see the guys coming, they're learning, they're asking all the time, and we have a Chabura once a week, and we're able to clarify everything back and forth. And the guys are really interested. We go into the Shir, everybody's always attacking with questions. Why? Because they're interested, they want to know the truth, and if there's something that doesn't make sense, everybody has 35 questions, and everybody wants to know everything until everything is not clear. Why well, it's not enough for them just to read it and say, okay, I read it. They want to learn it. They want to enjoy it. It's Gishmak. Right? They want to have that Simcha Tzatora. And Bechaz De Hashem, if we want to continue building this place, it needs to be done with the right intentions. We need to give because we love Hashem. We need to give because we want to give to build the house of Hashem. We need to give because we want to build the future of our of Israel and the future of our community in order to continue serving Hashem. And we need to learn in order to grow and to become better in order to give that off to other people. Right? In order to bring other people closer to Hashem. Learning is not about saying, oh, I know. Learning is not about, uh, okay, showing off, you know, a few masechot. Mazel tov. So you learn a few masechot that makes you a big person now. Right? You could be the same person you were before you learned this masechot. What happened to you after you learned? Right? The people that are giving, you're giving. You're giving while you're giving. Also has to be with the right intentions. And that Hashem, Abrecha, should be the tefillah, the Abrechim. That we should learn with the right intentions, and we should give with the right intentions, and we should be we should build good roots in this community that will forever last, like the Mishkan, forever lasted and will forever last because it was all done with the right intentions. When things are done with the right intentions, the Shem Shemaim, that's what the Shkina is, that's what the Bracha is. But if everything's not only for me, then it stays with you and nobody else. That's a shame. We want to give. A few of the other to say a few words. Everybody will speak a little. After, we'll do the scene first. Okay. The first part, you know, Masechah Nida is a very hard Masechah to make a scene on because a lot of the stuff that's discussed in Masechah Nida is not something that you could necessarily talk about publicly. But the beginning of Masechah Nida speaks about, right, Taharot, whether or not a lady, if she, you know, she, uh, you know, sees, um, blood that will contaminate her, that's basically what the first Mishra is talking about. And then at the end of Masech and Nida, it speaks about, it finishes off by saying, anybody that learns Talakot all day, we have Ben Olam Abba. What's Ben Olam Abba? Right? Not only is it guaranteed, in Olam Abba, generally people need other people. If they're below, but if you're learning Halakha and you're teaching Halakha, you're not only going to need anybody, you're going to be above everybody, you're going to be in your own. Therefore, it's important to learn Halakha every single day. But not only just uh, learning, but you have to open up, sit and read. I'll tell you, I was very impressed. I used to live in Flatbush. I used to go to Rabbi Maselton's Kihila over there. Uh, Rabbi Maselton in the Syrian community is unbelievable. He has a, he has a, a balabat in there. 
like ten balabatim every morning, and they're learning tour by Joseph Shukhanor, and they're sitting and they're learning and they're reading, and they really want to learn, they really want to get it, and they're really trying. It's unbelievable. Right? It's Mamash unbelievable. I feel like that should be the next goal for the Balarat to be able to open it up and say, I want to do it on my own. I want to read on my own. It'll take me one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. You're going to learn anyways. But at least you know in five years from now you'll be independent. But if you're never going to learn to be independent, you'll never be independent. Because if you look three years back, you're doing it anyways. You look forward, you're going to look back one day too. Do it right now so that one five years from now you'll be able to be an independent learner. You don't have to depend on other people to be able to read everything to you. هذا <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.